So when it comes to auth, many of the challenges that devs run into aren't actually the things they're expecting to have issues with. We worry about things like production issues and then end up struggling with token storage and 401 errors and cores. Now standards-based auth uses OAuth 2 for authorization and OIDC for authentication. Both of these specifications use an authorization server to issue tokens. Now let's compare auth in the back end and the front end. The back end can authenticate itself with the authorization server, it can persist user sessions, and it can safely store tokens. On the other hand, a front end app can't safely use a secret, it can't persist sessions, and it can't safely store tokens either. So these security issues are definitely not trivial. But if you control a backend that's serving your front end, you can get the security of backend auth in your front end. So let's say you have a JavaScript front end, a code executing backend serving the front end, and a standards based authorization server. The user loads the front end, which calls the backend auth API to check for an existing session. If they don't have a session, the backend creates a proof key for code exchange or pixie challenge. This means it creates a random string called a code verifier and then uses a code challenge method to hash the code verifier to create what we call the code challenge. The backend then sets an HTTP only pixie cookie. And when the user logs in, the front end calls the backend login endpoint. The backend composes an authorization request and redirects to the authorization server's authorized URI. And it includes the code challenge with this request. Now the auth server verifies the user's credentials and redirects to the backend callback route with the authorization code. The backend calls the auth server's token endpoint and it includes the client secret, the code, and the code verifier. And the auth server uses the code challenge method to create the code challenge and then match it to the one from the authorization request. If all this is successful, then the authorization server returns tokens. Now the backend can delete the pixie cookie and then create a session ID and store tokens. The session's time to live should match the refresh token expiration. The backend then sets a session ID cookie and redirects the front end to a login callback page. Now whenever the front end app loads, it calls a backend check session endpoint with the session ID cookie if it exists. And the backend uses that session ID to look up the user's session. If there's a valid session, then the backend uses the access token expiration to schedule a refresh grant for when the token expires. If the access token is expired, but the refresh token is valid, then we're going to perform a refresh grant by sending the refresh token to the auth server's token endpoint. The auth server sends new tokens down the wire, which are saved in the session. Now when the app needs user data, it can call a user info endpoint with the session cookie. The backend looks up the session, and then it can either decode the ID token, or it can call the authorization server's user info endpoint with the access token in the authorization header. The authorization server returns user info, which is stored in the user's session and then is sent to the front end. Now, if the check session looks up the session ID and either the session is expired or there is no cookie or the session just doesn't exist, then the user's not logged in and they must do so to proceed. Now, apps often need to get data from external resource APIs that need authorization. And in this case, the backend for front end proxies external API requests since the front end doesn't have an access token. It can't authorize requests it's by itself. The front end is going to call the backend proxy API with the session ID cookie. The backend then looks up the session, and the proxy API forwards the request to the resource API with the access token in the header. The resource server validates the token and then returns data. Now the proxy API then forwards that data to the front end application. Now when the user logs out, the front end calls backend logout endpoint. 
it looks up the session and then redirects to the authorization server's OAuth to log out URI. The auth server is going to log the user out, and then it redirects to the backend logout callback. The backend removes the session, it deletes the session ID cookie, and it redirects to a front end logout callback page where the user is no longer logged in. Now, with backend for front end, you get the benefits of backend security, but without the front end problems. And you can check out a code demo of backend for front end auth at this repo, plus three other auth architectures. Now, my name is Kim Maida. I work at Fusion Auth, where I lead DevRel, and we provide a hosted backend for front end. I will be at the Fusion Auth booth all day, and I also make custom stickers, so come chat with me if you want to talk auth or if you just want stickers. And I really appreciate your time today. So thank you very much.